You know what it is. Week yeah. two running back ranking debate where we rip through our top 36 consensus rankings. You will see mine. You will see Adam's and Andrew's. Adam, first time joiner. I know you've been a long time listener. Nice to have you on the couch, Absolutely. buddy. Absolutely. I appreciate you bringing me on the couch. Today is going to be the debate you guys have been all waiting for. All right? Yeah, I see you guys have Saquon all the way up there at one. I'm staying strong with him down at three. I'm anchoring mm. his ass Hell down yeah. there. You know what's crazy is um, I do have him at one. That's crazy. And I also saw that of the running backs last week, Surprisingly, Saquon topped out at the highest speed. Surprisingly, after all the offseason chatter. If only, he, if only he can rip off a big play. I know. <laughs> if only. I'm still probably going to win that bet somehow. <laughs> well, it, it's, if they're making lines on it, it would be sincerely in your favor for someone not to run a 60-yard touchdown. But you know what? We're here, he's baby. We're here. If he's good, if he's truly the number one back in the NFL right now, he's good enough. We got time. All right, well, here's what we're going to do. We're not going to run through every single player, but we, we will give you the rankings that we have consensus-wise, and then we will jump into guys that we probably have the biggest disparent, dis, pause. discrepancies. Dis, Disparity. Disparity. Discrepancy. Discrepancy. Disparities All them. With throughout the rankings, all right? And if at any time you just don't want to hear us yap anymore, you Turn can go to bdg.co and just get our rankings there by being a big dog member, all right? So that is a monthly membership that you get access to the rankings, waiver wire rankings, a private Q&A, our dynasty rankings, all that good stuff. Uh, the cheapest way to get that is by going to underdogfantasy.com or downloading the app and using promo code BDGE. When you deposit $10 or more, you'll get the membership for free for the entire season. These running back ranking videos will go up every single Wednesday. We will also have a separate wide receiver rankings video go up later on Wednesday. So subscribe to the channel for that. We'll have another video for that. At the end of this video, we'll each give you a deep cut at the running back position. And we'll go into our favorite streaming options at quarterback, tight end, and defense as well to wrap up the video. So make sure you stick around for that. Everything that we talk about will be timestamped down below. Let's talk about the rankings. We've got Saquon consensus up at one, Brees at two, Bijan at three. No huge discrepancies there. They're obviously in your lineup. And things get a little spicy when we get in the four, five, six ish range because Jordan Mason, we have consensus down at nine because Andrew's kind of anchoring him down at 14. You and I have him up at five and six. Now, we just saw him dominate the New York Jets front seven on Monday Night Football. I think it was 28 carries, went over a buck 50 total yards, a touchdown. And we just got a report saying that Christian McCaffrey is I would almost put him in the doubtful category at this point. It's had a long shot. Why, why are you the way that you are? Full disclosure, you know, we are making these rankings Tuesday nights, and so we got oh, that. Oh, is, is yours not updated? No, it's it's updated as of last night. I haven't updated it this morning. But okay, that being but said, to be fair, he just updated his, and you could have been like, I want to move him up in 14. <coughs> Don't speak also, my language. In chat, we'll in, allow you. We'll in the group you. chat last night, you told me, don't do that shit. That's fair. That's what you told me. Super, super fair. But we also just had the open discussion right now where I'm yeah. like, you want to move it up. Fair enough. Fair All right, enough. well, go ahead. We'll give you your chance now. Would let's, you, do let's you want to keep him at 14? Going once, going twice. <laughs> kind of. Kind of want to keep him All there. right. I, so I'm, you did. So that was, a, that was a whole ass bit. No, 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 Why no, are you the way that you are? <laughs> let's, let's have an actual conversation about yeah, Jordan Mason. Because I, I do think that there's a good chance that he outperforms my 14 ranking uh, given the circumstances this week. Now, that being said, I just – kind of looked at myself and I was like, if I have to make a start sit decision in my lineup and, and have these guys on my team, am I going to start Jordan Mason over a James Cook? I probably wasn't going to do that if it was my team. Really? Am I going to start him over a Derrick Henry? I know why. No, I'm not going to do that. It, it That was just kind of the decision for me. That being said, I still view Jordan Mason as kind of this low-end to mid-range running back one this week. I know 14 kind of doesn't say that in the rankings, but I think it's more so a range of outcomes. He's more of a running back one to me, the way I'm viewing him in my lineup. They play Minnesota. This is just not fair. They they play Minnesota. The, the matchup, I mean, maybe we look back. I and promise like, that is not going into my ranking. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I think that's fine. I'm just saying, like, uh, it's easy to look on paper and be like, Minnesota's a much better matchup than the Jets. There, there's a chance we look back and just be like, the Jets are a run-funnel defense, where their pass defense is great, the interior, their D-line, lost some pieces, and maybe they're not as good as we thought. But the push that San Fran had, and this is the thing with, like, the, the San Fran running back group is, like, it's C-Mac, sure, he's elite, but every running back produces when they get the starting chance there. Jordan Mason looks so good. All the hype in the preseason about him looking great, like, came to fruition right away. There wasn't a single running back that got another touch in this game, and they ran the offense through Jordan Mason. So, like, sure, he didn't catch any passes, that feels like just a one-game sample size product. If he went out there and went like four for 32 through the air this week, that wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. I don't think they're all automatically just being like, Jordan Mason can't catch. Let's take 
screens out of the equation. Let's say catching the ball for a running backs out of the equation. So Jordan Mason, for me, if you're telling me I'm going to get a dude who's a bell cow in the Niners offense at running back, like I agree, maybe we're a little bit too high, like top five, maybe a little bit of recency bias. I think down at 14, having him outside the top 12, outside of James Cook, who's like probably like a 30% chance to score a touchdown. I think we'll probably look back and be like, yeah, I should definitely should have started Jordan Mason over James Cook. I, I think looking very critically at my rankings, like just having him at 14, I could have the argument that he could be 12 for me yeah. because Boy, yeah. I could put him over James Conner. I could put him over Kenneth Walker this week, but that's kind of where I'm like, all right, James Cook, I know you just said he's being vultured by Josh Allen. That's kind of a conversation that we can have. I still think he's going to get enough work between the 20s and in the receiving game that he's valuable. but And then Joe Mixon, like, I'd just rather ride the hot hand with Joe Mixon in my lineup. So yeah. that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, I, I was going to say, though, last week, as far as total touches go, I, I believe Mixon was the only running back that got more total touches than Jordan Mason. Yeah. So just in general, volume is king at running back, right? Right. But then you tell me that there's a guy that's going to get basically 98% of the valuable touches in an offense that just – doesn't need talent to perform at the position. The game script's going to be there, too. It's just, to me, when I'm ranking weekly, I, I, I agree with you that it's like, all right, start, sit, decisions. What am I going to do? If I'm not willing or you're not willing to put Jordan Mason into your lineup in front of damn near everybody after last week, I just don't know what you need. Like, I, I, what do you need to see him do or anyone behind this offensive line do? This is just so, like, look at what's going on in Miami. I anybody would. can churn through this offense – the way that they have the zone read. And if you're telling me they're going to get 60% of touches, like sometimes in Miami, they can go off. This dude, we could be looking back at what he did last week and be like, okay, the Jets actually aren't that bad. This offense is just ridiculous. And when they're ahead, they're just going to keep giving the ball to Mason. I will say, having him in that 12 to 14 range, though, that there is no reason why he should not be in your starting lineup. He's yeah. going to be in your starting lineup no matter what. Facts, yeah. <laughs> Let, let's just make that point. Like, if you have Jordan Mason, he's in your starting lineup. You're starting him in – your RB2 slot, you're starting him over just about every single flex option you could possibly find. So let's keep moving down. Let's talk about the Miami running backs a little bit. We've got A-Chan consensus at 8. Uh, we have Raheem Mostert all the way down consensus 36, which feels right after last week's game. But both of them missed practice on Tuesday. They're obviously playing on a short week Thursday night mm -hmm. football. Jalen Wright, the rookie, explosive rookie, uh, was a healthy scratch for this one. Jeff Wilson played. Now, we don't know the status. Usually if you're missing practice on Tuesday and you have a Thursday night game, there's a good chance that you missed that game. They're playing against Buffalo. Jalen Wright came out. I don't know if you guys saw this. Jalen Wright came out and said, they're banged up, but I expect them to play, but I'm just staying ready in case the opportunity comes. Mm -hmm. So he's saying he expects them to play. Like, obviously, it, I feel like it's always a terrible idea to take a player's word for it. Like, yeah. all they do is lie about shit. Like, T. Higgins was 100%. Speaking of Jordan Mason. There. Speaking of Jordan Mason. Right, dude, speaking of motherfuckers just man, lying all the time. My man didn't fumble on the field, but he fumbled as soon as he got off. You see how it. sad he was? He's dude, like, this is why I don't talk to the I feel see, bad, actually. This is why I'm upset. Me too. I'm going to start using that. Motherfucker see, just ripped off the I'm biggest upset. game of his life, and he's like, I'm just getting shit on right and now. And y'all are asking me about when I knew I was going to start. Imagine imagine Shanahan pulls like a Bill Belichick. Do you remember uh, yes. it Jonas Gray? It was Who's, Jonas Gray. Was it Jonas Gray? <clears throat> Jonas Gray forgot to set that alarm. Don't forget to set your alarm. He did not set his alarm, miss practice or whatever. Was late. I'm just saying, what if he just after punishes, five touchdowns he, he punishes him? No, this Garendo, week, Garendo is week. the starter for San Fran, and we're all like, "This is fantasy football." And then, peak. and then somehow Andrew's argument of 14 was too low. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sure, you nailed it. Uh, okay, so Miami, we got Achan, like I said, up at eight. Raheem Mostert down <clears> at 36. It's tough for us to really. You got some? Well, I was just gonna say on this point though, like. It's actually interesting how sometimes you can find corollaries just a year ago. Do you remember when A-Chan had not played for yeah. about four games in a row? They went into the bye. Coming out of the bye, they're like, he's supposed to be ready to go, but he missed some practice. He played in the game. People put him in the lineup, and then he was, like, immediately exited. So, to me, even if he goes out there Thursday, like, we're doing – on a short week in the NFL, they're coming off of playing Sunday. They're not going out there and hitting – motherfuckers like it, yeah. this is going to be a walkthrough type of, of environment anyway you can't suit up for this it makes me think he's not gonna play okay now, let's, if he does I, play even yeah. if he does play i think there should be reason for concern that yeah. we're not just giving him the 18 touches that that's he had what, this that's week. what makes this so tough i would also say too like everyone's gonna get super excited about jalen Wright. like jeff wilson was the one that was active and he's like one of those vets that coaches just trust right he, like he's annoying for fantasy. you have mike mcdaniel and like the shanahan tree or whatever Jeff Wilson is a Shanahan tree guy where they trusted him in San Fran they're going to trust him in Miami 
Sure. Like, if H.A. and Moser are both inactive, how do you rank Wright, Jeff Wilson? Let's start there. I would go Wilson over. Over Wright? Over Wright. Really? Yeah. I actually think I agree with that. I don't. I saw I saw a meme on X today. It was like, who was active week one? Jeff Wilson. Who's been productive in fantasy before? Jeff Wilson. Who's blah, blah, blah? Jeff Wilson. Who do I want to start? Jalen Wright. <laughs> well, that's just for the vibes. But, no, I mean, the thing with Jeff Wilson, though, is, like, he was the – he was actually – so, if you want to talk about Jordan Mason and pivoting into, like, Jeff Wilson was the old Jordan Mason, right? The guy that got no run for a while and then finally has been in that system and has the, the traits to be good. He's 28 now and he's washed. So – he, he, his work will be annoying in the way that he does not have the upside, though, that Jalen Wright would have in this for offense. Sure. So that's where, for me, you're telling me we're down to just Jeff Wilson and Jalen Wright? That's a game where I'm going to be extremely concerned with Jalen Wright if he doesn't go off at some point. Does it does it worry you at all? I think it's a little bit understated. That Buffalo defensive line looked pretty good in week one. They held James Conner to just 50 yards. Yeah. Uh, he got into the end zone, so he saved his day, obviously. But it, he they... Had a pretty decent day on the defensive line. They, yeah, they look good. I mean, Arizona offensive line is not great. I don't, I don't know that we learned a lot from the Buffalo-Arizona game, to be quite honest with you. Except get, Josh Allen know. is him. Josh Allen is him, but Arizona's <laughs> defense is also terrible. So, like, we'll we'll see how he looks yeah. with his receiving group without playing against, like, a they're playing against a real defense. That hurdle around. touchdown was nuts. Insane. So, before we get to the Buffalo and start switching gears, if a chains out of the lineup, where I have him right now is, I believe, eight. Yeah, I have seven. I almost feel like, like I you would said, take, if he's active, <coughs> I almost feel like he's, if H.A. and Moser are both active, that still makes it so fucking It tough. kind of becomes muddled now. Yeah. And if if A-Chain's out, I would probably put Jalen Wright in the range of, like, Kenneth Walker. Really? Yeah. Wow. <sighs> yeah. I couldn't do that. Because, I think I would have, <laughs> that feels a little risky to me. because Why? Just because Jeff Wilson's in the mix. Really? If Jeff Wilson got, like, 14 carries, wouldn't surprise me. Do, do, do we not think Jalen Wright – like, to me, Jalen Wright is the perfect type of back to get – give me 12 to 15 touches. I agree. In the Kenneth Walker range, though? The, that, Kenneth Walker's upside and his are probably very similar with him getting 12 to 15 touches, honestly. Uh, I would rank both of them in the so – I'm saying between, like – I'd put him in between 15 and 20, probably. Like, if they were both out and it was, it was Wilson and Wright, I'd probably have Wright closer to where, like, I have DeAndre Swift. I was, huh? I was 28. Gonna, Jeff Wilson and Jalen Wright would both be <clears throat> somewhere Seriously? in that Jerome Ford to DeAndre Swift range. They would both be back end RB twos, high end RB threes for me. So you're telling me in the best case scenario for Jalen Wright in week two, you'd put him as a RB three. Best That's case, crazy, best man. case scenario. You have to, you have to play the outcomes, the spectrums here. Sure. Of like, there's risk and reward. There's a J, Jalen Wright. You have to admit that Jalen Wright's floor is low. Of course, but what I, I feel like while there's definitely a case, to be, who, what is the floor of running backs? 26 and down really not that great none no. of these guys have great floors DeAndre Swift has a bad fl- yeah they all have they all have bad so floors. I'm saying we're, it's not like we're, we're we're riding on some safe floor anyway give me the upside shot most of these guys don't have upside I would That's also fair. argue for the most part though that when you're in that range that we're talking about you're Which looking one? at these just for clarity just, uh that where you said Jerome Ford down to like okay. uh DeAndre Swift mm-hmm. we're talking about like Low-end RB2s, maybe flex running backs. And in most of those situations, when you're looking at the flex as well, you have to consider the wide receiver position. And I would say that some wide receivers are better plays than a lot of these running backs in the flex. No, sure. That, that's that, fair. They also have a lot of tough matchups in that in that area. Yes. I got to actually change this fucking – when we export them from Fantasy Pros, they don't put the matchup for some dumb fucking reason. There you have it. I mean, Jalen Wright to me could end up going from zero to hero, very much like Jordan Mason, who's like, oh, this guy's yeah got a little name cachet because of something he did in the summer but could be irrelevant. Jalen Wright could be a guy that's a healthy scratch to what the hell just happened. Yeah, no, Very fair, super fair. That said, you guys, I, I just want to conclude with kind of this part on Miami. You guys mentioned that if HN plays, you feel like there's some risk with HN. Yeah. You're still, no questions asked, throwing him into the starting lineup, though, right? If he's active, he'll probably be, for me, likely in my starting lineup, but I would definitely move him down. He wouldn't be, like, at this point, this ranking, I think, is outdated. Because, like, at this point, we're only assuming he's either not playing or he's active with some yeah. sort of, like, and injury designation. We so, I'd probably him. move him down to, like, Travis Etienne, Ramondre tier. Fair. I, I just can't imagine, for me, at least personally, I, I can't imagine a scenario where A-Chan is suiting up and I'm putting him on my bench. Yeah. I can't do that. No, it's fair. I think in that range, though, he's probably he's probably your flex. You can't bench him if he's actually active. Yeah. But the, the other concern I will bring up, and I think this is probably more, like, big brain unless you know one week of fantasy uh real analysis it's like one of the 
concerns I had with Jalen Wright, and I think this was something that I heard from the beat reporters in Miami and why he was probably healthy scratches because they were like, he's still like a raw runner and mm-hmm. he still has problem like hitting the holes. And that was one of the things I noticed like on film and I'd watch him throughout the summer and the Miami offensive line is bad, which is why like they lose all their pieces this summer. And I think that's why Raheem Mostert struggled so much. I also heard 100%. a little bit too, is it, it kind of dealt with special teams as well with Jalen Wright. Like of he course. didn't have enough of a special teams role to where he wasn't going to be valuable enough week one. Yeah. That, yeah. That could, that could make sense. That happens a lot in week yeah. one where like a player doesn't have a special teams role. And then they're like, all right, one thing happens. And it's like where you're active now and you're getting touches and stuff like that. So it will be really interesting to see Thursday night football you guys will know by that's, tomorrow that's another reason why though i'm jalen Wright. it does not ha- doesn't have a special teams role so it, it, when you're looking at guys that are making the 53 or not if you don't play special teams your, your ass is but that's great because if to me that's just like all right well we we know we there's one thing we're going to do with jalen Wright if we put him in our lineup and that's give him the ball in the yeah offense. well i think i think we all knew in, especially in the dynasty format like we all knew that jalen Wright was the eventual replacement here for raheem i mean that's what we hope but yeah. I will say this is kind of – if you're a Jalen Wright owner, mm-hmm. if Jalen Wright plays well, there is a chance that now going forward, like, he he starts to eat into Raheem Mostert's role. Correct. After week one, how worried are we about Raheem? Clearly, you guys are extremely, quite worried. Extremely. Extremely, yeah. I don't know how much – I don't know how, how much more worried I could be. This was one of the – this was one of the, like, big takeaways that I didn't feel like we were overreacting to because after week one, what I'm trying to do is, like, get a grip on what real position groups are yeah. in the NFL – because it, it's really tough to know throughout the summer. We're like, for instance, like Cincinnati, right? You always just think of them as a good team. But it's like, okay, their defense is actually something to really worry about. And that's something we need to know. It's like, oh, you, in your mind, you're like, Cincinnati's just a good team. Like, they, you know, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, they always have good defense. It's like, Cincinnati's not a franchise run like those types yeah. of teams are. I'm worried about that side of the ball. It's something we talked about a lot this, this summer. Again, they lose Robert Hunt. They lose Connor Williams. Raheem Mostert's not involved in the passing game, whereas A-Chan is, so that's where it concerns me. Now A-Chan's getting the goal line carries, too. That's exactly. I was willing to give, and I think that's partially showed by my ranking of of Mostert, I was willing to give him one more week to kind of just, let's double-check this and make sure this is legit. Yeah. But the thing that was the most worrisome for me last week was the fact that it's it's good for A-Chan, but it's bad for Mostert. The five, like, within the five-yard line, it was Devon A-Chan. Yeah, and and Mostert, like, a guy that's basically a... Uh, supposed to be another really fast track star that just did not look explosive. He's 31. On a short week, like, my boy, I am i don't know how much more concerned I could be. A long career and kind of just a one-hit wonder with last season's production. Yeah, so, yeah, extremely worried about Raheem Mostert. Not good. Not great. Um, let's keep moving down. We got Derrick Henry at 10, Joe Mixon at 11, James Cook at 12, James Conner 13, Alvin Kamara 14, Kenneth Walker 15, Josh Jacobs 16, Rashad White, 17, ETN, 18, Ramondre, 19, Brian Robinson, 20. Anyone in that batch of players that you want to hit on? Uh, I got a four-spot difference from you guys on on Henry, so I think we can touch on that just slightly. Okay. To me, you know, Henry didn't look great in week one. I wasn't super impressed with what I saw. The game script was a lot more competitive, and then obviously we all saw a lot more Justice Hill than we probably wanted to see, and that does look like that is going to be the kind of third down role for Justice Hill. He's yep. also going to be a change of pace guy, two-minute drill. The only thing, and the reason why I have Derrick Henry at six this week, is I do not expect this to be a competitive game against the Las Vegas Raiders. Do you know what the spread is? Is it the largest of the weekend? Guess what the number is. Nine and a half? Fucking spot on, yeah. Hell yeah. Literally nine and a half. Yeah, dude. That's him to guess what he already looked. Vegas, so, you know, it's, it's in my blood. <laughs> that being <laughs> said. Uh, it's actually it, a travesty that you're not a Raiders fan. Honestly, he's, he's a closet Raiders. Yeah, I know he's not. I know they weren't in Vegas yeah. when you were there. But yeah, but that being said, uh, I think lot, that they're going to be of fun winning to make fun of you. <laughs> a lot during this game. It's going to be not very close. And when that happens, they're going to grind out the clock. There's yeah. going to be a lot of Derrick Henry and there should be quite a few goal line opportunities for him in this game as well. So no, that, that's, that's super, super valid. I think the game script goes in his favor. I don't really necessarily have a worry about him. He's obviously a top 10 guy. So he's he's in your lineup. I guess, you know, looking at Las Vegas, they were. Outside of the uh, – J.K. Dobbins obviously, like, ripped them apart with his 60-yard run, 45-yard run, whatever. Outside of that, they really contained Dobbins and Gusto. They were, like, really, you know, in the interior. That defensive line in Vegas is very, very good. So, if Baltimore has more struggles on the offensive line, that could be a problem for Derrick Henry. But overall, yeah, I, this could be a game where he ends up scoring multi, multiple goal line touchdowns. I think, for sure. I, I think when – if you're if you're Baltimore, you go back and you're watching film, right? You're like, okay, the first drive we went out there and just kind of broke Kansas City's will – and then they answered really quick, and we just went away from the run game. So the thing with Derrick Henry is he's not – even in his prime, he wasn't someone that just normally came out and ripped one off the rip. He basically continued to break down your defense, and then all yep. of a sudden he's ripping long ones. So yep. 
I, I think there's much better days ahead for Derrick Henry, but over under longest <laughs> run for Derrick Henry in this game, 26 and a half yards. That feels about good. I that was a good line. Thank you. Uh, Listen, I I do this shit. I'm gonna go under. Under. I'm yeah. gonna go over. Just over. because you said under. Well, because then one of us is the bound to be right. Mm-hmm. For sure. All right, let's move on we to the, like, the, the juicy <laughs> part of the rankings. We, we've All been right. talking about news that like everyone's like starting it. in their fucking lineup. I like so where they, you're going. I think we got to. I think we got to get to the valuable stuff. The rhino. The twenties and and below down here. The rhino. The rhino. Who's the rhino? Uh, Ramondre Stevenson. Ramondre Stevenson. Oh, I was actually gonna go outside of the top twenty, but we can we can get there. We got Ramondre. <laughs> well, you have him at twenty two. Ramondre, okay, well, consensus 19. Ramondre, 19, B-Rob, 20, J.K. Dobbins, 21, Najee, 22, DeMont, 23, and Jerome Ford at 24. So, Ramondre, I have at 22. You guys have 18, 19, so he's a back-end RB2. I guess the way I'm looking at Ramondre is he looked fantastic in that first game. In my eyes, that's a product of two things. Like, one, the Cincinnati defense, and two, Gibson came into this game completely, like, injured. He barely played in this one. Yep. Now, I don't want to take anything away from Ramondre. There's obviously a chance that he's just a lot better, and maybe this offensive line is a little bit better than given credit for. This feels like, to me, one of those things that's going to be a little bit of an overreaction for the rest of the season. Where, like, one of the things that you talked about a lot this offseason, or a lot of the guys that you liked, the Joe Mixons, the James Connors, the, the Saquon Barkleys, was, like, I'm okay drafting these veterans. I'm okay drafting, like, older-ish backs on really good offenses. Yes. Those seem to be a very good bet this year. I don't want people to confuse what Ramondre just did with being put into that category because the New England Patriots are not going to be a good offense. What happened in week one against Cincinnati is not the norm for this New England Patriots offense. Correct. They're not going to be in a lot of those positive game scripts where they're you know holding on to a lead and trying to grind out the clock. That's not going to be the norm. Uh, that being said, I was impressed by Ramondre. He's a guy that I've been a little bit lower on, I guess, through the draft cycle and, mm-hmm. and just some of this other... I, I no guess doubt about it. If you own him, you feel great about it after week one. For sure. He's a, he's a sell-high target to me. He's definitely a guy that I'm still tempering the expectations with. And even though I have him at 19, I think that's mainly because I saw a little bit more receiving work. And maybe that does play into where you said Gibson, Gibson was wasn't hurt, healthy. Yeah. And maybe maybe that's just the case for a month, though. Like, it, it we'll could see. just be. Yeah. We'll see. This, this will be a much tougher matchup. They're in, they got to travel all the way to – oh, no, they're actually in, in Foxborough. But Seattle, they're playing Seattle. Right. It's uh, a good defense. Good defense. Their interior line's uh, pretty good. Now they drafted Byron Murphy, and they held um, – Denver to pretty much like no success on the ground last week. So this will be a much tougher test. And I think we'll have a, a good gauge for like what Ramondre's season will really look like after this one. I, I, I think, I think the counterpoint, I'm not going to say this is what I expect to happen, but I think the counterpoint for Ramondre is that looked great. And you should be as happy as you could be week one. Sure. Gibson got a lot of times you look, you look at contracts and you got to dig into them. Gibson was paid before Ramondre got the, the bag. Right? right. And Gibson is a one year out. On his contract. Yeah. It could be where Ramondre, if you remember two years ago, actually got a lot of receiving work. So it could be where, what if in, in a negative game script, like Jacoby Brissett is just dumping the ball off. Now. All of a sudden, yeah. this dude, like I think there's a range of outcomes where after week two, we're like, holy shit, he should yeah. be in the conversation of like running back, like high end running back too. I yeah. will say there was, there was a tweet the other day. It was like, <clears throat> so far just over one, a week one overreaction. Like what best ball exposure do you feel the least comfortable in right now? And I got 20% Antonio Gibson. I'm mm. not feeling great about it at the Fair. moment. I drafted almost no Antonio Gibson in best ball. I wanted no part of him. I just felt like he was just going to be annoying. And I really, I still truly feel that, like, when they get down, they want Gibson to be the pass catching back. But if, like, a hamstring injury is going to linger for a month or two, then sometimes shit just happens and it won't, yeah. and it won't happen. And Ramadre will end up being, like, a really good pick. It's easier to stick with what you've been doing than just try and bring in this new scheme. Or some other shit, yeah. yeah. I, I think, though... When you're talking this range in general, you're talking about, like, in, in drafts, you know, this, you get to get your guy season. This is play your guy season. Like, you could make cases for a lot of these guys. None of these guys that we were talking about a minute ago have, to me, very safe floors. J.K. Dobbins, as great as he looked, he's got, like, what, 10 touches? Look, Not Let's talk about J.K. Dobbins there. Yeah, because he explodes. 10 touches, 135 <laughs> yards, uh, touchdown, catches three passes. A long of, like, 61 Get a 61-yarder, a 46-yarder. They wrote him like, off. Uh, they they fucking we I mean everyone in the world wrote his ass off. I'm it's, not saying I'm out of that. I'm just saying it's, it's funny because like he he's still like <clears throat> clearly not conditioned. Like he can never outrun a player, but as soon as he can, dude, as soon I as felt, he can, I felt like he was hurt. Still, the way he was running, he's like running he's with never a limp. going. He's never going to run like he did in his rookie season in Baltimore. You don't think he can get that long stride back after an Achilles and a 
He had like he did the hard part. He just like he was too tired at the end of the run. Bruh, he I, looked bad he looked when like he was me. running. It looked so ugly, but he was breaking off big runs. So yeah. it's like who cares? I, I, I'm I'm actually extremely happy for the kid. Like he's a guy I think is super did talented. See next gen stats on it. Uh-uh. His ball carrier speed. Uh-uh. He was I think he was tied with Saquon. No really? way. With one of the top. Yeah. Dope. Damn. He's fucking back, brother. I mean, well, the what? thing is that that's as back as he's ever going to get. I, I feel like we never got to actually see. People kind of forget about this, man. As an Ohio State fan, J.K. Dobbins was immediately after Zeke Elliott and did, outdid his career that Zeke had was like phenomenal. Yeah, Dobbins in Ohio, at Ohio State was Dobbins him was to another level. Dobbins in his rookie season in Baltimore started to like pop off the page second half and then got hurt and then got hurt and then got hurt we never got to see jk dobbins at true form yeah i mean here's the thing this week in particular they play against carolina they're six and a half point favorites carolina looks like the worst team in like the last half decade of nfl football yeah this is a lot of points there's gonna be a lot of points the thing i like about dobbins long term for this season is like guys break out all the time right in fantasy a lot of them have to do with injury like jalen Wright, if he breaks out it's because most certain devon a chan got hurt jk dobbins is looking like he might take the role in like a muddled backfield out of just pure talent. And I feel like those guys tend to be the ones that have the highest ceilings and the ones that like really, really hit. Just going back to last year with like Kyron Williams, right? Like when you take it from pure talent, I feel like those are the dudes that end up being league winners. And who knows if Dobbins can stay healthy? Who knows if that week one was like legit against the Raiders and maybe the D line's a little overrated, whatever the case may be. I just feel like right now, if if you're ever going to play Dobbins, it's against fucking Carolina and you kind of got to do it. You know what? We've all... You've always said, as a part of the brand now, we've always said you draft guys a full year removed from the ACL injury, just they normally don't have an Achilles injury. Eight, and only eight <laughs> months removed from the Achilles tear. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to shout out all the Kamani Vidal people out there. The uh, just healthy You could scratch. just look at me, brother. Health, you could just look at me when you said Dude. No, we were, we, were talking, we were talking to people out there like, what are we doing with Kamani Vidal? Uh, well, during our Dynasty videos, people were like in startups drafting him in like the 13th round. And we're like, dude, you're taking him over like actual starters in your fantasy Like you're lineup. taking him over Brian Robinson. Yeah. Like- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is fucking yeah. insane. But I, hey, listen, Jalen Wright, healthy scratch week one. Now we love him. Kamani Vidal's an Achilles tear away from, I love yeah, from maybe being active one But time. until then, <clears throat> R.I.P. I, I no, love I- the message you had yesterday where it was like all of our – Dart throw goats last year. I mean, uh, this year in the pre-draft Troy process. Franklin, Troy Franklin, Kamani Vidal, Jalen Wright, just all healthy scratches Don't matter. week one. Mm. Rookie season. I told you, man, this is the most it. humbling job on the history of Earth. Well, we want to talk about humble? I hate to be – what happened with was, was Samir White, man? Like, you guys are, you guys wanted to – he was just going to be him after four weeks of getting a bunch of work. Uh, yeah. Alexander Madison catches one pass and goes to the crib. Let's 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 keep moving down the list here. We got Dobbins, 21, Najee, David Montgomery, Jerome Ford at 24, Tony P, Aaron Jones, Devin Singletary, DeAndre Swift at 28, Zach Moss. Yo, I think Zach Moss might be in for a pretty big year. Yeah. I'm watching Chase Brown back. I was going to say. Chase Brown's a dude that I, yeah, I regret not watching more film of him mm-hmm. in the offseason and just, like, relying on pure athleticism because I – He's got some trouble, like, running, running the ball. There's trouble in paradise. See, I got Chase Brown at 40. Yeah. I'm entirely too high on him at 34. Really tough matchup against Kansas City because, like, Chris Jones is just going to destroy that interior line. So, I'm not super high on Zach Moss right now. But I think and it, it, he's coming off a touchdown, so it's going to be hard to buy him. But I actually think Zach Moss can put up, like, top 20 numbers the rest of the season pretty, also, pretty uh, comfortably. Also, very positive for Zach Moss. Even when the game script got negative, he was, he was used in the receiving game. Yeah. Because Chase Brown's so really good stuff for Zach Moss right now. Um, we have him down at 29 right after DeAndre Swift. Then we got Zeke at 30, Javante at 31, Eckler at 32, Samir White 33, Tajay. I mean, you guys could see the list. Anyone on that, like, the last 12 from 24 down to 36 that we want to jump into a little bit more and talk about? Well, we have um, a pretty decent g- – there's a lot. Of, you can talk about anyone you want to hear. Go ahead, I, Andrew. A couple names that just stick out that I think maybe we talk about. I'd like to maybe say – DeAndre Swift, Zamir White, those kind of guys, because these are guys that you drafted to be starters, mm-hmm. and we don't really have them as uh, RB twos this week. They're more RB threes. I'll throw I'll throw Tajay into the mix with someone. Tajay into the mix. About. Yeah, it's unfortunate for Swift because like he got a really good role, but it, it was the product of the offense just struggling right. so much. Uh, I think the Tennessee defense is probably really good. <laughs> unfortunately, like Houston's a good fucking defense too, so we might not be able to see it. Um, and, and that was like I guess one of my concerns with Swift was. Like, he's never really played behind a bad offensive line, and it's probably a little too early to say whether or not Chicago's offensive line is good or bad. But when they're playing against plus D lines, like, they're clearly going to struggle right now. So 
I don't know that I expect better a better game from Swift right away, but they do get Indy, then L.A., then Carolina, and Jacksonville. So he might be after this. He can week, open up. Yeah, he could open yeah. up. He could be a buy low candidate yeah. if he I, struggles again. I, this week. I, think, I, I completely agree with the way you just finished that because, like, to me, some of the takeaways I have is just NFL in general. The fact that Caleb Williams gets away with a win after that fucking horrendous performance Thank is you, honestly, Winners honestly win. impossible. Winners win. Yeah, that's <laughs> winners win. But it, it, it's, when, like, when, it's like Casey putting up the third. When an offense goes for winning. when an offense goes for like that's I believe it was less than ten first downs, one hundred and forty eight yards. What do, you, what do you expect anybody to do, let alone DeAndre Swift? Right, right. So, like, to me, it's – I actually think what I saw as far as – the concerning part would be Khalil Herbert's usage, but – You found that concerning? I mean – How much did he get played? Khalil Herbert got out-snapped by Velas Jones. Sure. But, I mean – Velas Jones are using the, that running back now? Yeah. Yes. Well, that was gonna, I was going to say the fact that Khalil Herbert was getting work while Velas Jones was out there. Yeah. I found the, it. I found the work for Swift positive. He saw sixty three percent of the snaps, which Agreed. I felt like was Wait, more. Wait, Velas Jones? Are you are you sure you're not? Yes. You didn't mean Travis Homer? No, no bro, Travis Velas Homer. Jones, I'm looking at snaps right now. DeAndre Swift seventy percent, Khalil Herbert eleven, Travis Homer twenty. Maybe it was carries. He has the same amount of carries as Velas okay. Jones. Velas Jones is a wide receiver. Travis Homer also. But no, they were using Velas him as a running back. Jones is playing running back now. They moved okay. him uh, this offseason okay. to play on lineups.com, which is a free resource out there for you guys if you want to look at snap counts. I know most of the. Websites nowadays, if they have like advanced analytics or that kind of stuff, are behind a paywall, PFF, Fantasy Life, etc. But lineups.com is a really good free resource where they have snap counts and percentages out there. So go check that out if you need to. But yeah, maybe they just don't have them listed as a running back on here, so I don't see them. But that was one of the storylines that they harped on uh, in Hard Knocks is that he was transitioning to running back so he could stay okay. on the team. They're trying to keep the GMs. But uh, I, I do want to. I I actually need to get you that real stat because. I have it right here in my notes. Give me give me two seconds here. Yeah, I'm, I'm not concerned about the Herbert usage at all. I'm more concerned about the overall, like, offense. Okay, so here it was. Velas Jones, he saw more carries than Khalil Herbert. Correct. Travis well, Homer the, saw the same amount of carries as Khalil Herbert. And then I just wrote some other stuff, like Romo Dunze had one catch. Yeah, he, here's like what that. I'll say. As someone who liked Khalil Herbert all offseason, like, as I'm doing my waiver bids this morning, he's number one drop for me. Oh, he's a – my, yeah. my point is that they – the whole offense – Gate basically muddled even the situation further. The fact that you're using Velas Jones out of the backfield, Travis Homer, and Khalil Herbert while that offense wasn't good is what I think makes Swift look as poor potentially in fantasy as he did after week one. I think he's. I think there's a lot of better days ahead. Yeah. I think this offense won't be that I mean, horrible. 70% of snaps I feel like is all you could ask for for, for Swift in, in my opinion. But I, I, w- I thought it was like 60, but... Maybe the other maybe the other like underlying factor could be like Keenan Allen left the game with an injury. Rome's getting an MRI on his knee. I don't know if you guys have seen any updates. I haven't. I haven't seen any updates. Maybe if those two he's week this week time, like... Really? Rome's week to week? L. Um, okay, well, if... If uh, if those two guys miss time, maybe it's more usage for DeAndre Swift in the passing I game. I haven't heard really anything about Keenan. Have well, you? Well, yeah, I, it was I pretty did. Quiet. You didn't hear that? DJ Moore said he's just old, man. He'll be fine. <laughs> All right. Is that okay. what he said? Yeah. Relax. Yeah. Now I did. I did. Uh, I, I try to listen to a lot of like injury recaps after the Sunday night games, and from what I've gathered, it's not a, a big concern for Keenan. Yeah. There's two two things happened on that play. One should not be con- like surprising at all. He drops a a touchdown pass. Was like, okay, what the hell, Keenan? But seeing him limp off the field is something we should be used to seeing by now. Yeah, facts. Let's talk about Samir White real quick because he did split work with Alexander Madison. And the most concerning part is Madison is the clear passing down back. For sure. He played all of the third and longs. He played all the two and four minute drills, caught a nice 35 yard touchdown. Looked pretty damn good doing it. Did you see what Antonio Pierce said as well? No. He said they would be doing a dysfunction to this team if they did not ride the hot hand. Okay. There you go. So Zamir White's uh, he's still the more explosive back and I think in like good game scripts he'll probably be the better play. The problem is like this was the concern going in. It's like the same thing I kind of had with Ramondre Stevenson. It's like how often are you actually going to have game scripts where you could ride your starting running back to to 20 carries that or doesn't whatever. catch passes. Right. So Madison might be the better play in PPR. He's definitely like a really good stash obviously. We'll talk going we'll talk about Madison in a little bit. Yes, we will. Let's talk about the Denver running backs because we have Javante who oh. struggled, got out snapped, out carried, out targeted, out played by Jaleel McLaughlin. McLaughlin caught like five passes for five fucking yards, so he was Just useless. One yard, but one yard. Okay, even, <laughs> yeah. even worse. PPR fucking scam, as Hayden Winks would call him. Uh, Denver plays against who's Denver play this week? Uh, Denver plays against uh, Steelers. They're at home against the Steelers. Go. Do we have any confidence playing either of them? I think the usage for McLaughlin. I kind of feel like if we're discounting him as a non-playable player, we're like. Too in the product, we're too much in the box score, and not like okay, Sean Payton's using the fuck out of him. I'm not confident starting really anybody in this Denver offense at the moment. Fair, like I, I just think if you're in a pinch and you need to play McLaughlin, 
Sure, but full you PPR, should... you got to choose between one of them. Who are you starting? No. If I have to choose between one of them, <laughs> no, Devontae I don't want to choose either of them. I'm I. If no. I have Javante Williams, though, I am trying to get away from Javante Williams because I do think so Jerome McLaughlin okay, is a so problem. Okay, so we're just not going to answer that question. No, because I don't okay. want to play either of them. I They're mean, both I, on my to, bench. I was just going to say, like, to me, this is not about you and your team. This is about people who have running back 32 if and you, you decide a guy. There, to this, is why, this is why, You're cooked. Your this is why we have the rankings, <laughs> and this is why we have the waiver wire because – there is somebody out there, I promise you, that's not named Jaleel McLaughlin and Javante Williams that I want to start. I, I, they don't inspire confidence for me at all at the position, <laughs> period. I'm but now against up, against Pittsburgh's defense? Yeah. Man, hell no. I'm picking up Greg Dorch off the I won't do it. and starting him over these motherfuckers. Because guess what? Andrew might be the only person that loves Greg Dorch more than Kyler does. I love Greg Dorch. Speaking of Marv, we'll I get to the Greg receivers. Dorch. All right, well, that's our uh, top 36 running back rankings. It didn't feel great. No. Um, it got really bad at the it end. Gets, Holy when crap. you get to the bottom, That's it fine. gets bad. All right, so let's get into our uh, deep cuts at running back. These are guys that are ranked outside of the top 40 as per ECR right now. Now, I had Jeff Wilson listed here. I don't know if that is that is that fair game right now. It seems fraudulent now. It, uh, it, feels, a, it feels a little spicy, but, like, you also have Justin Fields as your quarterback for streaming, so that feels just as – that feels the same. We got we to we gotta stop a, as a – Was he not, like, one of the – We got to stop as a group deciding what the line is that we're going to cut – and decide from and be like, all right, 15. Now yeah. we'll, we'll take him. Well, <laughs> well, we like we did that, but then I'm like also looking on Sleeper, and I'm like, oh, he, he they're like rostered in 87% of leagues, so they're not even like streaming well, options. So look, you you said it's got to be somebody you can pick up off the waiver wire, and I looked but on Sleeper. Fields, li- Fields had like a 22% ownership percentage really? on Sleeper. I feel like that can't be true. Like there's no way people aren't picking him up to play. That's what it said. I, you got to keep in mind, too, that Russell Wilson was questionable pretty much all the way until Saturday. Fair, I guess. And then it was like Sunday. But then, like, people, like, there had to be a million people that picked up fields on Sunday. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Jeff Wilson still floating out there. I'll give you Jeff Wilson. Like I said, I have him as, like, a back-end RB2, high-end RB3 if he plays against Buffalo. But I'll go to a deeper cut, and it's Bucky Irving. So, okay. Bucky Irving, obviously behind Rashad White, played really well last week. It was in the fourth quarter. It was a blowout, but he averaged, like, 6.8 yards per carry. I think he'll continue to get more and more involved as Rashad White continues to be a bad in-between-the-tackles runner. They play against Detroit, which is a very high over-under. Uh, they'll play inside the dome. They'll have to play catch-up, which, you know, Rashad White's obviously great in the passing game, but if they're going to spell him at all, Bucky Irving can also play really well in the passing game. So I just like what we saw from him in week one. Uh, Rashad White, will he needs to, like, prove that he could run in between the tackles to hold on to that role. I don't know that Bucky Irving really has, like, a super high ceiling because I don't know what his touchdown upside is. But I think if you're desperate, like, he's – you could do worse than, than Bucky in this in this matchup. Also, for the record, you, you're razzing me for Justin Fields, but your stream is Baker Mayfield. Baker – there's no way that Baker's less owned than Justin Fields. In a one-quarterback league, people don't own dudes like Baker who are, who are cones in the pocket. He was definitely drafted more than Justin Fields was. Uh, I mean, drafted, but by Sunday when Justin Fields was starter, there's no way. We'll, we'll see. There's no way that more people didn't pick up Justin Fields and own Baker. Mayfield. We live to fight another day. Who's your stream at the running back? Well, my stream at the running back is a guy that I was a, about a game away from writing off in all my dynasty leagues, and he's bike. Travis Etienne, okay, goes, that's not my play, but he has 12 carries, and then as does Tank Bigsby. Now, one of the things I told you guys in the offseason was that Travis Etienne on that great season was actually less efficient than was – I'm trying to talk to you, but I'm getting Justin Sorry. Fields. What is the percentage? Justin Fields 89. is owned after in today, 89% of leagues. Running? I have no idea. Today after waivers have been running? Maybe. Yeah. But, like, people can't stream them. You would have had to pick them up off of waivers. Right. Isn't that, what, just, stri- isn't that what stream is? Yeah. But that's like being able to pick them up now. Can like, you, that would make sense if it was a waiver – if we were filming a waiver wire video that goes live Tuesday. Can you pick up Baker Mayfield right now? Probably. Let me see. I can pick another quarterback if you want. Are we doing the no, running back just, or the quarterback one? I'm, I was just saying. We're just but if you're, I was just saying, if you're giving me the Jeff Wilson shit, I'm like, Justin Fields is definitely more highly owned than Jeff Wilson. I'm just saying, I didn't even give you shit for Jeff Wilson, first of all. But also. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. But Maybe yeah, I'm just yeah, being yeah. sentimental. I told you today was a sad day. Sentimental. I, I told you I was going to be sad today. <laughs> it's all right. Keep going. Okay. Back to Tank Bigsby. Back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> 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 Still hate you. I'll never forget that. But Travis Etienne okay. was actually in that great season for fantasy, less efficient as a runner than was Tank Bigsby. I remember people were like, what? There's no way. Week one, Travis Etienne, 12 carries, 44 yards. Tank Bigsby, 12 carries, 73 yards. Travis Etienne, single-handedly in my estimation on one play, lost them that game. And the dude, like, 
I, I have no problem with Travis Etienne, but I'm just like, how are you as a competitor just continuing to pout on the sideline? That play is over, man. But tra- Tank Bigsby doesn't get any receiving work, so that part of the offense is still largely and only Travis Etienne. But if you're telling me Travis Etienne is supposed to be him, but week one on 30% of, of touches or 30% of snaps – he got the same amount of carries. That's concerning to me. It is. It is concerning because it's like you know that they – I mean, you draft Tank Bigsby in the third round. That's a day two back. Didn't work out in year one, but they clearly, like, wanted to have a supplemental back to Travis Etienne, and they talked about it all summer. And, you know, they did that last summer as well, so it was kind of hard to believe it. Week one kind of tells us, like, where they're at with it. We'll see, you know, <clears throat> like maybe Miami's run D ain't that good. They lose Christian Wilkins, who is, like, their middle interior guy. So maybe, you know, maybe something's at, at play there. Again, it's, like, week one, so hard to – I don't want to overreact to, like – you know, Tank had a couple runs that ETN didn't have kind of thing, sure. but definitely concerning for ETN. And I think, like, Tank is someone that could end up having, like, a 50 for a touchdown game or something. Yeah. I mean, he got, like, he, he I think, is in the conversation for if you are desperate and need to play, you could put him in. I will admit, Cleveland this week is not the greatest of matchups. Mm-hmm. Right. But he, I would be, if I'm, like, desperate at the position, he's someone that I would be considering playing if I had to. Mm-hmm. My, uh, my stream is going to be Alexander Madison for the Las Vegas Raiders. It's not Derrick Henry. No, it's not Derrick Henry. Uh, <laughs> could have been Justice Hill, I guess, but uh, mm. it's going to be Alexander Madison. We've already talked about it. He was the third down guy. He was there in the pass catching situations uh, when they were trying to throw the ball, when they were trying to play keep up. They're playing the Baltimore Ravens. They're going to play keep up in this game. It's probably not going to be a lot as Amir. They're going to have to start passing the football. And in a PPR format, I could see a situation where it's Madison crazy is crazy that we're like Madison in a PPR format slam. <laughs> I know, because <laughs> last year he wasn't. Yeah, well, t- what ha- like. What happened Alex, last year people, as a Minnesota pe- People fan. wanted to make Alexander Madison cool. That okay. is not going to be a good thing to do. I'll people want to write Alexander Madison off. That also is not going to be a good thing to do. I don't, I don't feel like that scheme played to Madison's strengths. Uh, it's a lot of the outside Yeah. He's stuff. not, like, fast and explosive enough. He's not. Yeah. It didn't play to a lot of his strengths. Um, also, I think we've just noticed that he's better w- with less volume. The more volume he has, the less efficient he gets. When he has a little bit less, he's just a little bit better. That's, that's what a, it's that's always a really, kind of been with That's him. a really nice way of saying he's not very talented. He's he really is a nice very good he fat. he's a very good number two at the NFL level. Like, there you go. I, I agree with that. No, and so fair. Madison, you know, he's in that role here in Las Vegas. I think it's gonna be good in this one you where know, he gets a lot of capacity. You know pass what's really crazy about that when you look back hindsight twenty twenty? He his his entire career at Minnesota for the most part was waiting to take over the Dalvin Cook role as to be the only guy. And that's crazy to me. You know, looking back at it, too, as, like, a Vikings fan, I never really wanted Madison to replace Cook because Cook was just so good. But there was a time where, obviously, Cook got older and he lost a little bit of that juice. And it was like, all right, now I want to see what Madison has. Looking back at it, we might have been better off just running Cook one more time. Probably. Mm. I mean, the, even the last year you guys had Cook, didn't he? I th- feel like he went over over a thousand. Yeah, he was still fine. It was, it was like a bad thousand, but a, like a lot of the there. Cook stuff actually ended up being more financial than it was anything else. Yeah, that that makes sense. I mean, when that player, like the way you're paying him, if he's not performing at like a thirteen, fourteen hundred yard level, you got a problem. Well, and Quasey's very much like a money ball type of mindset, so don't pay the running back. Dude. That makes sense. So we two projections. Zamir White is running back 41. Wow. And when you look at week, he played on 38% of snaps. Ouch. Mm. That is that not, is about as condemning as it gets. <laughs> All right, I, let's let's do our streaming quarterback, and then we'll do the streaming tight end and defense in the wide receiver episode. I'm going to start at QB. Okay. And I'm not taking Justin Fields because you wanted, okay. you know, you wanted to press about it. Let's okay. go Sammy D. I'm going to take Justin Fields then. Sam <laughs> Mother F and Darnold. Okay. I'm starting him this week. Interesting. He no, is available. Don't do it. No, no, no. Listen, listen. I have the purple on. I understand. Cook, brother. Looking at the ownership percentage, 15% of leagues right now. Okay. He is rostered in. This matchup, it seems scary, right? San Francisco, good defense, whatever. This coaching staff, Kevin O'Connell, he is an incredible play caller. The weapons are still there. Jordan Addison might miss this one, but he still has Justin Jefferson. They're going to be playing keep up. So, yes, you might have a turnover or a fumble or something like that from uh, Sam Darnold, but they're going to throw for a ton of yards. Kevin O'Connell has always had guys throw for a ton of yards. Nick Mullins was throwing for 300-plus yards. Joshua Dobbs was a startable quarterback in this offense. Sam Darnold looked better than both of them. I know it was the New York Giants. If you're in a pinch and you need a guy that you can really pick up off the waiver wire, like Nick said, you have to be able to pick him up off the waiver wire. Darnold is a guy that you can do that, and I think he's going to give you a decent floor here this week. Are you sure? 
I, I like that call. It's kind of counter. It's kind of counterintuitive because I think a lot of people see Sam Darnold, they see Sam Fran, and they're like, "No, nah, that's an easy stay away matchup." Any concern if Jordan Addison misses the game and they only have Jefferson really to throw to? Yes. No, not that much. Okay. It's not going to change the game script for Darnold. Like he's still going to have to pass the football a lot. Even if Addison is in this game, they're going to have to pass the football a lot. Uh, and I still think that there's still talented players around there. You might get a little bit more of Aaron Jones in the receiving game, which actually might be better for Aaron Jones's day as well. But that's okay. really a. Uh, so I got a, I got a sit start in in your idiot league mates uh, for my QB two. I'm deciding which I'll probably be doing this every single week. Darnold. Or Aaron Rodgers, who is at Tennessee. Well, that's a great. I guess who I got as my option, Aaron Rodgers. Ooh, okay, interesting. So I let like, me let me oh, hear here's let me hear yeah. your point then. Well, I mean, with Aaron Rodgers, it's that's actually what in the hell in the eeriness of this? They come off playing the 49ers last week. Yeah, right? I mean, if you watch that game, to me, I mean, you should not have expected Aaron Rodgers to look like amazing. The dude's old, and he's coming off an Achilles, but. He didn't look much different than he has in the past. Bro, I, I will. I thought like if you looked at the box score, not great. I thought Rogers' arm looked great though. But and, and he looks to be very much in his like succinct world where he knows where he's going early. Like it, he looks locked in, and I just think that Aaron Rodgers is a guy too that is, feels like he's out to prove the world wrong when he's got a Hall of Fame career. And I think he's coming off of a week where he, he the first thing he said was I can play a lot better. Mm. I think he's got. A lot of the traits and tools of him are no different. I think this week they're going to have some stuff cooked up early. You, you can see probably a first or second drive go early touchdowns, a lot of Garrett Wilson, a lot of Brees Hall. Yeah. And I think Aaron Rodgers actually is a very decent option this week coming off of what looked like on paper or to you know someone not watching the whole game, like a very mad performance. Yeah, I will say a couple things. Rodgers, I, I thought he looked way better than the box score. The only problem is like it's so clear that they want to run it through Brees Hall. It felt like they were going first – first down run, second down run on almost every fucking drive, which is like you're putting Rodgers in such bad situations on like third and long every single time. The, the thing, they had no run success, really. The, yeah, but the thing to me, though, was like they did a really good job, in my estimation, early on in the game, finding a way to craftily get Garrett Wilson touches yeah. out of the slot. And Aaron Rodgers seemed to almost like try to force him to sit down in the zone where he should be, where Garrett Wilson's trying to run through. I, I think – this guy's going to get better as the year goes along, for sure. I, I, I agree. I'm, a, I'm still a little bit, like, nervous about Rodgers statistically sure. right now because they want to go so much through Brees. And, like, I don't know where, like, the big players or the touchdowns really come in for Rodgers. And Tennessee's pass D is, like, so improved. Well, the one thing I'll – Pass D and the defensive line is really good yeah, as well. Yeah, Tennessee D is, like, just feels good. Yeah, but I, I agree with that. Um, that said, I, I think – and you just look at a lot of Aaron Rodgers' years, it's like they'll do stuff like get, get quick touches around – the goal line to get him past like the, he seems like a guy that always ends up getting more stats than he should a lot of times when they just like kind of an innovate a way to get the ball to playmakers at the goal line Brees Hall is going to be someone that's used out of backfield a lot too I think as well yeah as, as a uh, dump off option yeah I mean that that's like you know Brees will have a couple huge plays through the passing game that'll that'll get it done for both Rodgers and Brees uh that'll both them for fantasy so I'll, so I'll have to make that starting? decision <laughs> I think I'm going to go with Darnold only because I think I think passing volume, I think Darnold might have like a good 10 to 15 more passing attempts than Aaron Rodgers will in this game. He might throw the football 30 plus times. I mean, 30 is really low. He better throw it at least 30 times. Um, yeah, I guess so. Right? I, just, I feel like I know he I know he played pretty solid last week, but most times when we see Darnold throw the ball 30 plus times, it ain't good, people. No, no. <laughs> I, 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 that was 12 for 12 sound to start the day off last week. That that's, sounds great last week. I, <laughs> I, I agree with that for <laughs> sure, but it's almost just like I'm, he doesn't need to be efficient at this point for fantasy to like be okay. And with Rodgers, it's like because the volume is so low, he needs to be really efficient. Um, I'll take efficiency. So <laughs> I'll take efficiency it's, for 500. It's Super Bowl <laughs> Sam season, boys. Enough. Super Bowl um, okay, Sam. so yeah, we, I mean, we talked really briefly about my quarterback. It was Baker Mayfield. Maybe he's largely on. Maybe he's not largely on. I don't know. He's coming off of a huge game. Obviously, he's, he's less on than Rodgers. I'll tell you that. Okay, let's, that, <laughs> that's a good start then. Uh, Baker, obviously, four touchdowns look great. I think what I like most about this offense is now Jalen McMillan is like such a real wide receiver. Three, he's got real weapons. They play in Detroit uh, in the dome, 51 point over under. It's the highest over under on the slate. They're going to have to pass the ball a lot. My one concern would be if Detroit 
decides to play bully ball and the time of possession goes like 65% in their favor, mm -hmm. then they're playing, I guess, catch up, which could be a good thing for, for volume, but it's going to be a pass funnel defense for Detroit for the time being, which lends itself to Baker throwing the ball a lot. They look really good in the first week. So um, Baker, I think is a sure, you know, fire him up again in week two. There you go. One takeaway from just that in general, Carolina's game, Tampa's game, is Dave Canales a fake sharp? Uh, Wouldn't surprise me. I just think people just overestimate the impact of like, coaches and it's not like dude there's a guy that's there's a dude out there throwing the ball who's like the talent out yeah. here there's obviously good play callers and stuff but yeah like that pisses he me off he might be a when, fake sharp I, probably I, fake sharp i i think that sentiment is going to be a common one and i think it's something that in general this concept gets so overdone and under appreciated like i don't know i, I think there's good play callers and then there are there's a head coaching job file this away Remind me next year, next offseason, do not overrate offensive play calling. Okay, actually, one other thing I wanted to circle back on with Rodgers, I saw a tweet, and I, I can't find it, but I want to pull it up. Someone put out, like, you know, this is something we talked a lot in the preseason about, uh, like, teams using motion and play action and stuff, and that's kind of like the future of the NFL, and, like, your EPA per play shoots up when you're using that a lot. You know, you looked at the, the tweet was like the top five teams in terms of motion, and it was like the Niners, the Dolphins, the Rams, like the, the good Shanahan's offenses. Shanahan's tree. The, right, Shanahan's <laughs> tree, bottom five. I remember the Jets were, like, bottom three. My concern with the Jets' offense is, like, as good as Rodgers is, because they don't – they have Nathaniel Hackett, who is basically a zero at offensive coordinator. You're getting no innovation. It kind of feels like Rodgers might be letting the game pass him by a little bit in terms of, like, being a little bit more progressive with it. And, like, if they use Garrett Wilson in motion a lot, if they use more play action, which might not really happen. Like, we see Kirk's not using any play action because the Achilles. Yeah. Rodgers might not be as mobile. And I, I just worry against a team like San Francisco where it's, like, they know how an offense runs smoothly with motion. It's like if the defense doesn't have to worry about motion, like they know how to lock that shit down. And that concerns me. Like Nathaniel Hackett is a zero. I will say on that game. point, there was a very uh, – Andrew probably has seen it a hundred times on X where <laughs> Aaron Rodgers is literally not listening to Nathaniel Hackett as he's speaking into his ear. And uh, that reminds me of when literally he checked every play that McCarthy gave to him <laughs> yeah. uh, in Green Bay. I think that if you look at the first drive, I believe it was – Garrett Wilson comes in motion and they check it down to him right away and he almost scores a touchdown. Right. Up getting, but I, I think Rodgers is someone that's actually going to find a way to probably have to get more of that involved on his own. And he's someone that has done that in the past. I, I hope so. Because, I, I mean, we all, we all need it to happen if we want any hope for any of those uh, players. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I'd be cool if Aaron Rodgers isn't successful this year with the Jets. Isn't? Yeah. yeah Why? Well, Aaron Rodgers, you – See oh, the okay. jersey I'm yeah, wearing yeah. today? I that just don't care for that top guy. Top five dumbest things I've ever seen. He has, he has bias is what yeah. he's saying. I like it feels like so long that so long ago that Rodgers was a Green Bay Packer, to be honest. I've already forgotten. It's not that. that long ago, actually. No, I know. I just yeah. it's, it feels like it because it's just like the hype around the, him being a Jet is just. Yeah. He's played, he's played a couple snaps in one game. Ago. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I actually I do like Jordan Love, though, so I guess I don't hate all Packers quarterbacks. So Jordan Love hasn't burned you yet. He will. Don't worry. I mean, he's getting there. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, that is the running back <laughs> rankings episode. Like, we, I somehow thought this was going to be short. It's just literally impossible for us to have a short Dude episode. said keep it 30 minutes. 30, I don't know what we're at right now, but we're at least double that. An hour, we for cooked. sure. Yeah. <laughs> Tony's going to be pissed. <laughs> Love you, Tony. All right. That's all we got. We'll see you for the wide receiver rankings video in a few hours. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. And again, you can get all of our up updated rankings throughout the week on bdge.co the cheapest way to get it though is by downloading the underdog fantasy app using promo code bdge depositing ten dollars when you do so as a first-time depositor and we'll see you in the ranking streets and i you. promise you that ain't all we got Yerd.